How's everyone doing? I'm sorry it's been a, maybe what a week, two weeks since I dropped a video. Just had to celebrate a special event, my daughter's birthday. So I had to take some time off, but I'm back and let the haircut tutorials continue. So today I have my client Tim and we're about to get him a nice light taper. We're gonna do a light taper on the sides. We're also gonna do a low ball taper in the back. And I'm still gonna do the fading down method. So we're gonna start with the number four guard, lever is closed. And we're just gonna trim the top down, as you can see. With most straight hair clients, you wanna typically go against the grain to prevent from accidentally plugging them. And what plugging means, uh, removing too much hair in one particular area where it looks like a bald spot. Notice the hair on his forehead. At the time I was cutting, I didn't notice it, but it's clearly irritating him because his, his eyes are, are squinting and you always want to make sure your client is comfortable and just any type you have, anytime you have some hair on your client, just remove that hair. Because it's, you know, it's, it, it can be itching or just annoying. So I will remove that hair. As you can see in my little blower. And like I said, I'll be doing the fading down method in this video. So I'm going to start with the number four and I'll wind up ending with the number one guard. So as you can see, I'm switching to the number three guard, lever is open. And what I typically do when I'm fading down, I make a couple passes or two passes, one pass from the left side of his head to the right side of his head, and then I close the lever. But for time restraints, uh, to keep the video underneath 30 minutes, I'm only gonna show me doing maybe one pass with each guard. Because I am trying to, you know, make good quality videos, but I am also aware and conscious of everyone's time. So I'm not trying to waste your time. I know everybody's time is valuable. I do appreciate everyone that's watching my videos and learning a little bit from these videos. That's why I keep doing them. And I do have some surprises coming up for the channel. Um, I will do some um, more bike content. So look out for the bike content that's on the way. And then I will continue to do the haircut tutorials as well. So now I have the number two guard attached. And like I said, I always start with the lever open and I go from the left to the right, or I might go from right to left and then I close the lever. And what I find when fading down, it's just, it's like a, dummy proof way of not raising up the fade because you're just blending down and you're just removing hair and layers so you can see your progress you can see what you're doing versus when you fade up sometimes you can raise the fade a little bit higher or it's not as symmetrical or even on both sides so what, like I said what I know is when I'm fading down each guard just blends into the other a whole lot easier and it's it takes out the guessing and the wiggle wiggle room when you're fading down so that's why I'm just just trying to give everybody different options so some videos I will fade down uh, some videos I'll fade up you know because some people may want to start low and work their way up high and then some videos I'm gonna have plastic guards and other videos I have the metal blades so um, I'm trying to just be well-rounded and I also use the shears, um, just trying to just show everyone there's multiple ways to achieve a good, clean haircut. Now I have the one and a half guard attached. And each time I'm doing this, like I said, I, I'm, I'm lowering the position that I was at. So with the four guard, 
I started in the center of his head or the top of his head, the apex. With the number three guard, I did the crown or the parado ridge. With the number two guard, I just went around the midpoint of his head, right above his occipital bone. And with this one and a half, I'm going right to the occipital bone and right underneath it, as you can see. Even I'm taking it all the way down to the nape of his head right here. Going all the way down to his nape to his neck. And right now my lever is all the way closed. And once I finish using this guard, I'm gonna come back with the number one guard. And that's gonna give us the ultimate look on the sides for the light taper. Because he just doesn't want, and as you can see, I'm with the number one guard, the lever's open. He doesn't want the bald or the blowout skin taper on the sides. He only likes that in the back. My man Tim is from Philly, and this is just how he likes to rock his taper. And he likes his taper to blend in with his beard. And he likes to see his uh, C cups, or in Philly, as he told me, they're called hooks. And Tim's a good guy. Um, I actually met his wife and his uh, youngest son first, and because he was still in Philly at the time. I'm located in Texas. Uh, in the suburb of Forney, Texas. So I met his wife first and his uh, youngest son. And then when he moved with his uh, to Texas with his oldest son, I just, you know, I take care of the whole family now. And that's just the beauty of being a barber. Uh, you start off meeting uh, the son or the nephew, and now you're cutting the uncle, the dad, the brother, sometimes the sister. It's just a beautiful feeling when you're doing something you love to do and you're passionate and you tend to get paid to do what you love to do so that's beautiful so right now i'm just doing a little lever play i have the lever open i'm on i'm on the nape of his uh, neck right now and then i'm going to close it and that's going to give it a bald look and you'll see that any second now i'm going to close this lever And I'm only going to do this in the back. Right now I'm just using the corners. Now I'm about to lower his beard down so it can be symmetrical and blend in with his sides. And don't worry, I'll go back to the back of his, uh, his head by his neck area and I'm going to close the number one guard and it's going to look as if I took the guard off. And this is going to give me that first level of transition. I believe right here I have the lever in the middle. And you can see everything's coming together. It's a taper fade on the side, but as you can see, it's light. So that's why I said this haircut tutorial is going to be over a light taper. So just above. Now for the ball taper in the back. Switching to my Babyliss Pro FX Silver trimmers. I'm gonna create a guideline. This will be the only guideline I'm gonna create. 
And in order to achieve a symmetrical guideline, I'm using his ears. So I, I start on the left, I make sure that my line is even with, under, with the back of his ears. And that's how I achieve that, that straight line. Or you can just eyeball it and just make a straight line. Now I have the lever all the way open. There's no guard on, making another layer of transition. Now I place the lever in the middle, made a couple passes, and now it's all the way closed. So when I'm making a lever, a level, I'm sorry, of transition, I use the full blade. When I'm removing the line, I use the corners. Now I have the half guard or the 0.5 guard, depending on what blade system that you're using. And I'm just going up an inch. The lever is all the way open. I'll make two passes and then I'm gonna close it completely. Now doing a little bit more detailing, I saw some areas that needed some little bit more work. So now I put the one and a half guard back on. I'm gonna start with it open and I'm just gonna remove any dark spots that I see. Those dark spots are gonna be removed. Everything needs to blend and be cohesive. Start with the lever open, make a pass from left to right and then I'm gonna close the lever fully. Now I was satisfied with that process, so I just removed the guards, and now I'm just, you know, still detailing, using the corners, starting with the lever open, and then I may put it in the middle and then close it. And again, just remove any unwanted hairs with your duster, or if you have a blower like I do, or air compressor, just try to keep your client comfortable. Now we're gonna go to the edge up. I'm starting in the back. I'm stretching and moving his ear out of the way, using the corner as I go over his ear. And what I did not show, a lot of times when you see barbers and they have the super crispy line, they're using holding spray. Some form of holding spray, or they're using a mixture of alcohol, shampoo and water, or they're using spritz. So what I edited it out, I used holding spray. I sprayed it all around his, his uh, edge up and let it, I let it dry, air dry, and I also use a blower. Then I come back with my trimmers and then I line him up. So that's pretty much the trick on getting the super sharp lines. And what I did on one side, or what you do on one side, you wanna do the same thing on the other side. And that just helps you keep everything uniform and symmetrical. Always be careful when you're going around your client's ear, because typically you're using the corner of your trimmer most uh, most of the time your trimmers are zero gap so it's easy to cut your clients ear so just be client I'm sorry be calm and be cautious as you're going over your clients ear and try to move it out of the way Now I'm just making a nice little arch and connecting it to his beard so I can give him that hook 
that he wants or the C cup that he likes. And you also want to be careful when you're underneath your client's nose as you're trimming their mustache. Make sure you always ask your client if they want the inside of their goatee area cleaned out or just natural or if they like a line. That could cost you a client. If a client is growing their hair inside of there and you just trim it out of there without asking them, they may say something to you. They may not say something to you about it until after the service and they be like, hey man, I want to keep that hair and you didn't ask them and you know that could cost you a client the client may or may not come back to you so that's important in the client consultation so i asked him did he want to keep his hair or keep it natural or if he wanted a line a straight sharp line inside of his chin area and he told me he wanted all the hair removed Some clients, when you're doing the edge up, you can start in the center and work your way to the sides, or you can do like I just did. I start on the vertical bars, and I work my way back to the center, and then I just connect the line. So with that being said, it's a lot of people will tell you, oh, it's a proper way to, to do the edge up, start in the center. You don't necessarily have to. Do what's comfortable for you, what works for you. I'm not going to tell you to start in the center all the time because I don't. I didn't with, with, uh, with Tim. I started on the sides. The ultimate goal is just to make sure you have a nice symmetrical edge up by any means necessary without compromising that line, without pushing it back. So you do what you think is comfortable. If you're comfortable starting in the middle, and working your way to the left or to your right, continue to do that. It's all about muscle memory and practice. Practice makes perfect. As you can see again, I'm not starting in the center, I'm starting on the sides. And I'm just gonna connect, now I came back to the center, reinforcing the line, and I'm just gonna make sure it's symmetrical. Blow the hair off my client, and you know, let him look at it in the mirror and make sure your client is satisfied. Doing a little detailing work. I have the one and a half guard attached and I'm just, you know, removing little dark unwanted spots that I see in the blend. I appreciate everyone tuning in and checking out my videos. Hopefully you learned something from this video. If you did, please drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video, tell someone about the channel. And yes, like I said earlier, more motorcycle content is on the way. Stay tuned for that. Enjoy your day, your weekend. I'm Junior. Peace.